You may be seated. Well, isn't this a great day for a commencement? We are so very proud of the graduates on this day and excited to be able to share this 2022 fall commencement with you for the College of Agricultural Sciences. My name is James Pritchett. I'm the Dean of the College of Agricultural Sciences and a proud CSU alum myself. This is one of the, my two favorite days on this campus, the first day being the first day of classes when many of us got to be together for that very first time. And then this, this, this commencement day that we get to share together. You know, one of the things that's true is, is as we come together today, this is really about, this commencement ceremony, really about convening together and celebrating together and spending time together. And in any culture, in any place, this idea that we convene means that, that we're providing an authentic representation of what our values are, what's important to us. Think about that when it comes to education and when it comes to our institutions and when it comes to things like how we support our families. That convening becomes very important to us. And at a land grant university, one of the things that's important about us when we convene is to, to affirm the values that we have, affirm the value of stewardship on the journey that we have in education and the value of stewardship that we have for our state. And so one of the really important things that we do when we provide stewardship and we affirm, we affirm what has happened to us in the past and what our commitment is to the future. And so one of the things that's very important to us at Colorado State University is to affirm the fact that when the land-grant university system was formed, it came at a cost to some of our peoples. And so with that in mind, I'd like to read to you the land acknowledgement of Colorado State University. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land-grant institution and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion, and significantly, that our founding came at a dire cost to Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, our responsibility, and our commitment. Would you please rise for the presentation of colors by the Colorado State University Wing Walker Honor Guard with Lucy Logan singing God Bless America and our national anthem.
that so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Thank you, Lucy. You may be seated. Well, graduates, this is your day. You've worked very, very hard over the past several years. I would say this is a class with a lot of grit. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Well, I hope you savor this moment, and I hope it's the one that you will live long and to, to remember. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the members of the platform party. Each of these individuals plays a very important role in our university and represents folks who, who do the same. Platform party, I would ask that as I call your name that you would stand and rise and remain standing. And I would ask that if you want to, give a single clap for each individual as I announce their name. It is a privilege for the College of Agricultural Sciences to have with us this afternoon, Dr. Andrew Norton, professor and college marshal, agricultural biology. Almost, almost. <laughs> Dr. Jan Leach, Associate Dean for Research, College of Agricultural Sciences. Better. Dr. Eugene Kelly, Associate Dean for Extension and Deputy Director of the Agricultural Experiment Station, College of Agricultural Sciences. Tricked you a little bit with that one. Dr. Meng Meng Gu, Department Head, Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. Dr. Keith Belk, Department Head, Animal Sciences. Dr. Haley Shenard, Department Head, Agricultural and Resource Economics. Dr. Francesca Kutrofo, Associate Department Head, Soil and Crop Sciences. Dr. Amy Charkowski, Department Head of Agricultural Biology. Ms. Addie Elliott, Assistant Dean of Advising and Student Success, College of Agricultural Sciences. Tricked you. <laughs> Mr. Armando Valdez, Vice Chair, Colorado State University Board of Governors. Dr. Sonia Kreidenweiss, Interim Dean of the Graduate School and Vice Provost for Graduate Affairs, Colorado State University. Dr. Jan Nerger, Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Colorado State University. Well done. Mr. Robert Sakata, Commencement Speaker and President of Sakata Farms. Dr. Susan James, Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs, Colorado State University. Mr. Matt Camper, Assistant Dean of Teaching Practice and Academic Programs, College of Agricultural Sciences. We we'll also want to introduce our announcer, Dr. Sean Archibek, and our sign language interpreters, Kenna Bridges, and Bridget Flood. Please join me in welcoming these individuals. Well, parents, relatives, and friends, I'm looking out on the outskirts of where the graduates are right now. Well, I could see the pride on your faces as you were walking around. We, 
Provost Nerger and I were actually talking about that as we came in. That's one of the days that makes this special, is just see the pride in your faces. We're proud of your students too and everything that they've done. Uh, and I wanna share that with you in this convening experience, that opportunity for us to do that. Now graduates, let me talk to you a little bit. You're feeling a lot of emotions right now, aren't you? Kind of cycling through that in your mind right now? I mean, I, I think there's a sense, I, I can see accomplishment on your face, right? Because of the good things that you've done and how good that feels to be in this moment in time. And I can see, yep, I see a little bit of anticipation, right? <laughs> on your face too. And maybe that's about the next step, the next six months, or maybe that's about this evening that where you feel that anticipation, right? But I think above all, and I think the thing that joins us today is our feeling of gratitude. Wouldn't you agree with that, graduates? The feeling of gratitude that you have for your parents and families and friends and the folks that were with you. So with that in mind, one thing I'd like to do is, is I'd like to have the faculty of the College of Agricultural Sciences please rise and our professional staff. Would you please, would you please rise for us for just a moment? You know, the heart of any institution of higher education is its faculty. The faculty are the ones who provide the timeless curriculum. They're the ones who have challenged you in class, sometimes when you wanted to be challenged and other times when you didn't want to be challenged, right? And they mentored you and brought you along in ways that were very important to you, asked critical questions of you and responded with terrific answers when you asked the same, sometimes about what the curriculum was that you were learning and other times just about life and how important that was. Our professional staff, so think about your academic success coordinators, uh, the folks who worked in the office staff. Maybe you had the opportunity to be able to work at, at the research farm or have an internship and you connected with professional staff at CSU. They too wanted the very best for you. And for them, this is a celebratory day themselves and they share, share that gratitude. The fact that our college is highly respected among global universities and our student placements is so high is due to the fact that you have these faculty who've created the architecture for you and the staff who've helped to take you through that. So would you please join me in thanking our faculty and professional staff. Thank you for all that you do. You may be seated. Hey, which is, it's with the spirit of gratitude that I want to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Robert Sakata, who's president of, of Sakata Farms. You know, I think there are um, ways that you get to know people over time, and I've had the chance to get to know Mr. Sakata because of his leadership roles in Colorado agriculture uh, over the years. And a few things stick, stand out to me that, that help to describe his accomplishments and credentials and who he is as a person uh, when, when, when thinking about those experiences. You know, one of those experiences is, is being at Sakata Farms, knowing that well-run farm, which is, he's a steward of that family farm, and I think he's gonna talk to us a little bit about what that means to him and what that means for his, for his family today. So I've observed him in those, those kinds of roles, the resilience that he has, and really the smart decision-making that he makes. I've also had a chance to see Mr. Sakata really in, invest in collective action, bringing other people together around a common goal. He's one of the co-founders of the Colorado Fruit and Vegetable Growers Association and had served as its president. And one of the neat things that I've seen at those CFVGA meetings is when they have a pitch contest because Mr. Sakata said, we want to have innovation as part of what our grower experience is. And we want to connect agriculture to the allied technology, the high-tech industries. And so there was a pitch contest where we got to see folks that had invented new ideas about how to test for listeria and irrigation water. Or maybe they were using robotic pickers with, uh, within strawberries that were grown in greenhouses. Or maybe it had to do with how to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions by using some models that were available to you. All of those came because of Mr. Robert Scotta. And then one day I had the chance, I had the chance to drive down I-25, I was going down to a meeting in Denver, and I turned on my radio, I turned it to 1010 KSIR, some of you know that, as a farm radio station. I wanted to catch up on the prices and find out what was going on in agriculture, and I heard Mr. Sakata, but I also heard some of you too, because what he had done was, he was in that moment, in real time, speaking to a class on entrepreneurship in the Department of Ag and Resource Economics. And in that class, he was asking students questions and responding to questions at the same time that the radio interviewer, the radio interviewer was asking questions too and listening back and forth to students. And that convening of conversation and elevating everything that you do, that is part of who Mr. Robert Sakata is. So I think it's only, gosh, it's only appropriate that we ask Mr. Sakata to give a charge to you about what you can do 
to fulfill that promise of what it means to be in agriculture. Mr. Scott. Well, thank you very much, Dean Pritchett. What an amazing day to be here before you as you celebrate the stage of life that you've just finished up and all the hard work that you've done. Everybody help me congratulate them right now. I think we really need to congratulate them. Well, um, Dean Pritchett, thanks for that really nice introduction, but really I'm going to go into really who I'm about, because <laughs> I think you blew it up a little bit out of proportion. Uh, you know, when I graduated high school, the last thing I wanted to be was a farmer. I wanted to go out and I wanted to find the cure for cancer. And so with my parents' blessing, I went off to the other university, <coughs> sorry, and studied molecular cellular developmental biology and had the opportunity to work for a company called Amgen. It was just when they were first putting in one of their first research labs here in Colorado and actually helped them to put in their first lab. It was actually in this shopping mall. It was kind of weird, you know, to have a shoe store right next to our research lab. But that's the space they found. And it was ex an exciting time. I'm going to reveal kind of my age here now because our research team was actually working on trying to synthesize DNA in the lab. At that time, it had never been done before. And so here we were. It, believe it or not, it was taking us over three months to add just a single nucleotide base pair to a DNA chain, and that was to a short chain. And what was happening as we were building that chain on, of course the chain was folding in on itself and, and there, our yields were dropping way off, so we were trying to overcome some of those hurdles. Well, you know, it was an exciting time, and it was kind of fun to be on the forefront of, of something. And I thought, originally I thought that was the direction I wanted to go. But all of a sudden I became kind of disheartened, and I learned that you know, it really, it wasn't making me happy. And in reality, I was very unhappy, and I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. Well, how many of you guys like skiing or, or snowboarding? Raise your hands. Anybody here? Come on, it's Colorado, right? That's what we do here. Well, believe it or not, I pulled my roots out, left the lab, and went to Steamboat Springs and got a job at the Kitty Corral to teach skiing to three- to six-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, that's, my parents weren't laughing. <laughs> Uh, but it was really amazing. I had such wonderful experiences there, and I'd like to share just one of them with you today. One of my first classes I had, this little girl comes up to me, and she tugs on the pant leg of my uniform, and she says, teacher, teacher, I think I'm in the wrong class. Well, I still remember to this day that her name tag on her coat said Bethany, and she was on my class list. But I asked her, I said, Bethany, why do you think you're on the wrong class? I thought maybe she thought her ability level was different than what I was going to be teaching. Well, there was this extremely long pause, awkward silence. And then very timidly, she looks up at me with her big blue eyes, and she enunciated as clearly as she could, teacher, do you speak English? <laughs> uh, well, you know, when I left that world, uh, that arena of biological research, I was depressed. I was confused. I thought, had I wasted all those years pursuing a career that I was going to be unhappy at? Little did I realize that those three to six-year-olds were going to teach me three important lessons in life. One is life is what you make it. Number two, what, well, let me see, what's the second message that they talk? And I shouldn't, I, I feel bad about this, is that you should always remember to look at the world through children's eyes. And then number three is don't be afraid to ask those important questions. Well, I think the best decision I've made in my life is that I only spent one year there. I had seen so many people that had gone there, just like me, kind of searching for their purpose in life, and got stuck there and were unhappy. And I wanted to take that information that I had learned from those six, three to six-year-olds and apply it to my life and move forward. So I decided to go off to the big city of LA, you know. And I could tell you about hours about more about my adventures in LA, but I'll fast forward where eventually I did make it back to the farm. Some place that I, I, I said that I, ever, I didn't ever want to come back to. But since that time, I can't express to you how fulfilling an experience that has been to work with my family. And I've come to the realization that really, you know, my goal when I graduated high school was to find the cure for cancer. Well, in reality, growing those fresh, fresh vegetables on my farm 
Isn't that really part of the cure? Well, I tell you now, um, the next chapter in your lives, you have a pr profound advantage of, be of building that great foundation here at CSU. And I think um, but one suggestion that I would have for each and every one of you that I've experienced luckily in my life is really to find out what your heart desires. You never know what wondrous journeys each of you, what lies ahead of for each of you. The path for me, well, it was very torturous. You know, I went all over the place. Um, and I really have to thank my parents for the support all along there. Hi, Mom. I think she's watching on, on live today. <laughs> but I think this is a perfect time, as we did earlier, is let's all of us recognize all of those people that have had a positive influence on you, whether it's been parents, maybe it's been a sibling, maybe a significant other or a spouse or partner, a counselor or a professor. All of that, we can do so much more together. And you're really proof of that. So help me in really thanking all of those people. But now, let's talk about your futures. How many of you heard from a farmer or rancher about all the challenges that they face? You know, maybe it's animal health or animal welfare, or maybe it's the ability to find qualified help, or degradation of, of soil or water quality issues. Uh, um, maybe it's um, limited re return on investment. You know, I could go on and on with those challenges that, that we face on the farm. But you know what that code word of challenge really means? What do you think it means? Really, it's opportunity. And I charge each of you to find a challenge and turn it into an opportunity that you can apply your knowledge and your expertise in. But more importantly, also continue to apply what got you here today. And that's the path of how you got here. Sometimes the journey you take is even more important than the destination. My father continually reminded me when I was growing up, and even as an adult, <laughs> I have to tell you. He said, Robert, it's not important how high up the ladder of success you get. What's important is how many people you have helped be there with you. Well, unfortunately, this past June, uh, my, fa my father passed away, and as you could tell, I, I really, really miss him um, because he was so inspirational in my life, and he st still is. I mean, he's got an amazing story where he and his family uh, were living in San Jose, California when World War II broke out, and they were lost everything, lost the farm that they had there. They, they weren't, you know, they were very poor, and they didn't have much, but they lost all of that, ended up in an internment camp in Utah. Um, but because of an ag teacher that he knew in high school, he was able to garner a, a character reference letter from him, and he was able to get an early release from the internment camp, and he chose to move to Colorado. And he found a great dairy farmer there that was willing to help him, you know, let him sleep in his, in his barn, and through his hard work, he really developed a successful farming operation, along with my mom. Uh, hi, mom. <laughs> uh, his wife for almost uh, 64 years. If you talk to my mom, though, she says they sh you really should count it as 134. <laughs> because can you imagine that? Working all day with your significant other, going home at night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. But I think that really goes and shows the testament of the farm families and how strong that bond can be. And really, you know what? It's the people that make agriculture special. And so it's really a pleasure and my honor today to really invite each and every one of you to join our agricultural family. So in conclusion, in conclusion it's time to party, right? You guys deserve to go out there and party because of all of your hard work. But I want to leave with you, as you, in your journey as you move forward, a list that my dad provided to me. And it was my dad's simple, 10 simple don'ts. It starts off, don't just look, observe. Don't just hear, listen. Don't just talk. Say something. Don't just work. Be productive. Don't just set goals. Achieve them. Don't just live on a title.
Continue to prove that you are worthy of it. Don't just tell the truth. Live it. Don't just love. Have respect and honor it. Don't just make a promise. Follow through with it. And finally, don't just pray. Have faith. Congratulations, guys, for a job well done, and thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much, Mr. Sakata. Those are some words to live by. Appreciate you sharing with us. Uh, good afternoon, graduates. My name's Addie Elliott, and I serve as the Assistant Dean for Academic Advising and Student Success. And I offer my warmest congratulations today on a job well done and uh, on your graduation from the College of Agricultural Sciences here this fall 2022 semester. Um, many of you I met online or virtual hybrid uh, through summer orientation when you first arrived or through a very unusual RAM welcome. And I'm really excited to see that you've made it through a challenging yet amazing experience here at CSU and how you've changed and grown. It's been my pleasure to watch and, and support and get to know many of you. Um, your curiosity, your passion, and your inspiration have definitely left their mark on the College of Agricultural Sciences. Colorado State University uh, recognizes outstanding scholarship by granting the baccalaureate degree cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude to those students in each college who have achieved high academic excellence in their undergraduate program. These students collectively may be recognized by their gold gowns. The College of Agricultural Sciences designates the distinction of summa cum laude to those graduates maintaining a cumulative GPA of 4.0 during their undergraduate program of study. These students are also wearing gold cords in addition to their gold gowns. The college designates magna cum laude to those graduates maintaining a cumulative 3.919 GPA and cum laude to those graduates maintaining a 3.787 cumulative GPA during those academic programs of study. Those decimal points matter, don't they? Uh, first, I would like to invite our candidates for, for cum laude to please stand and be recognized as I announce your names. We ask that the audience hold your applause until we've acknowledged each group of candidates. Devin Gerken with a major in agricultural business. Laura Moore with a major in soil and crop sciences. And Jordan Parker with a major in animal sciences. Please join me in congratulating our cum laude candidates. You may be seated. Now I invite our candidates for magna cum laude to please stand and be recognized. Courtney Bolin with a major in agricultural business. Maddie Serwinski with a major in equine sciences. Aspen Kuvaduk with a major in economics and environmental and natural resource economics. Luke Dial with a major in soil and crop sciences and Sarah Vinzant with a major in horticulture. Please join me in congratulating our magna cum laude candidate. Thank you, you may be seated. Lastly, I'd like to invite our summa cum laude candidates to please stand and be recognized. Miranda Zuvich with a major in animal sciences Thank you, you may be seated. CSU was founded over 150 years ago as part of a land-grant system to educate the citizens of Colorado and the world. The undergraduates in this room represent some of the most talented and committed people in the, the state, the country, and around the globe. 
I would like to take a moment to recognize a special group amongst our community, our first generation students, faculty, and staff. To be among the first in your family to obtain a college degree is an achievement unto itself. And now you are seeing the culmination of your hard work and sacrifice as you graduate. If you wish, I invite all first generation graduates faculty and staff to please stand to be recognized as we applaud your success. Congratulations. You may be seated. I'm pleased to recognize the students who've earned the distinction of University Honors Scholar. To become a University Honors Scholar, a student completes an integrated program of study, which includes seven honors seminars and honors courses in the major, and a senior thesis, while achieving at least a 3.5 cumulative GPA. These students may be recognized by the green gowns and black stoles they are wearing. When I announce your name, will the students who are graduating as candidates for the University Honors Scholar please rise and remain standing as we recognize you. Roe Balmer with a major in animal science. Madeline Mason with a major in environmental and natural resource economics. Miranda Zuvich with a major in animal sciences. Please join me in congratulating our University Honors Scholars. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to welcome back to the podium the Dean of the College of Agricultural Sciences, Dr. James Pritchett. Thank you for that, Addie. On behalf of all of the members of the Colorado State University community, I'd like to take a moment now to thank all those who have served our country, active military and veterans in our audience, and all of our student veterans. Will you please rise and be recognized? Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you for your service to our community, to our state, and to our country. Would you please join me now in welcoming Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Jan Nurger, who offer remarks before the presentation of graduates. So I look around uh, throughout the year to find some sort of inspiration for my remarks at commencement, and you are the fortunate ones where my inspiration came from a cocktail napkin. <laughs> and the cocktail napkin said, uh, sometimes your journey will take you off your path. It's all part of the same trip. And I thought about this, and that actually reminds me of the remarks that you gave just a moment ago. And during your time here at CSU, I'm sure that there were times like you were thrown off your, you felt like you were thrown off your path. And whether it was getting into and, and passing the courses you needed, achieving the grades that you hoped for, dealing with your freshman roommate, participating in undergraduate research, changing your major, finding a parking space, <laughs> building long-term relationships, learning how to navigate the impacts of COVID, it may have felt at times to be a, like a roller coaster ride. But personally, I don't think of the analogy of a roller coaster ride or life as like a roller coaster is apt in this case. I'm sure there's, you know, like ups and downs and sharp turns, but when you're riding on a roller coaster, you're strapped in, you're moving along a predetermined path, and you end up exactly where you started. For all of you graduates here this afternoon, this is clearly not descriptive of your experiences while at CSU. You're not in the same place intellectually, socially, or emotionally that you were when you started your studies here at CSU. Instead of a roller coaster ride, I really do think a better metaphor for life and its inevitable ups and downs is a road trip. 
You each experience your own unique road trip, filled with high-speed freeways, detours, side trips, speed bumps, and if you're like me, maybe a few speeding tickets now and then, maybe one very recently, like maybe it could have been sometime very recently. <laughs> but unlike a roller coaster on a road trip, there's no predetermined path, there's no road map. You make the decisions on where you go. And at the end of each day, you end up in a completely new place than when you started, a place you might never have thought you'd be. Your journey may take you off your path. And as we move forward from one day to the next, we're met with challenges of one sort or another. Some are quite pleasant and exciting and others are difficult or maybe more of a struggle. But all of these challenges are simply part of the road trip. It's how we handle them, or in other words, how we choose to traverse the path of our journey that makes the difference. Your CSU education will help you meet those challenges and define and guide you on your journey to success. So take a moment and reflect on where you are today and what direction you're heading. Maybe it's graduate school or professional school, a job, travel, a gap year. Maybe you are still uncertain, but it's all okay. It's your road trip, so you don't, don't get discouraged uh, if you come across a detour. You'll end up getting where you're supposed to be because you're destined to do great things. And as you continue your road trip beyond CSU, I encourage you to enjoy each day. Be kind to yourself and to others. And my last piece of advice, don't carry on too much baggage with you. Congratulations. I now want to invite Board of Governors Vice Chair Armando Valdez to the podium. Mr. Valdez, I present to you the candidates from the College of Agricultural Sciences for the baccalaureate degree. Would you all please rise? These candidates and their fellows in absentia have fulfilled the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science at Colorado State University. Now mine. I hear you're mine. That's what I like about this. Well, on behalf of the Board of Governors, I want to bring a celebratory congratulations. And on a personal level, I'm always excited to come and celebrate with the graduates of the College of Agricultural Sciences because you benefit me. I'm a native of the San Luis Valley. I'm a lifelong farmer and rancher. And so all of the innovation and opportunity that Mr. Sakata talked about is what you are going to bring to us in rural Colorado. I'm passionate about agriculture. I'm passionate about rural areas. And I'm passionate about everything that you do. And I'm always amazed at the breadth and innovation that you bring. Because in my world, we sometimes keep a narrow frame of reference of what agriculture is. But every time I talk to Dean Pritchett or every time I talk to the College of Agricultural Sciences faculty, I get reminded of just how far reaching your talents go. So thank you and exciting. And you're gonna be helping people as Mr. Sakata talked about working through that opportunity because while you are bringing opportunity and innovation, farmers and ranchers, they are the most optimistic, opportunist people out there. Do you know the two best years for a farmer and rancher? It was 20 years ago and next year. And they always believe next year is going to be better. And that's why even though they have a dis natural disaster, some tough, challenging situation like Mr. Zakata talked about, they go back and work those long hours, those long days, and try again. Today is not the end. It's the culmination of your academic career. But it is the beginning of where you're headed. And so I know you're anticipating this moment and anticipating tonight. So if you can find me out there tonight, first drink's on me. So by the virtue, but remember, agriculture is the code word. I don't want like 5,000 graduates coming up to me and want me to buy drinks. <laughs> by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, because you are our ambassadors representing your degrees and talents that you bring, I hereby confer upon each of you the Bachelor of Science degree together with all of its rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Let us recognize the achievements of this outstanding group of students. Congratulations, fall of 2022 graduates. Enjoy and celebrate.
Richard, are they back to you? Are they yours again? Yep. Oh, they are. Okay, it's at Addy. Addy this way. Thank you. Graduates, you may sit down for another moment. We will now award diplomas to each of you in the graduating class. The department marshals will lead the graduates to the stage, and the department heads will present the diplomas. Dr. Sean Archibek will announce the graduates, and for those in the audience, a listing of our candidates may be found in your commencement program, which is available at the CSU commencement website or at the, the QR code displayed at the entrances. Graduates, it's truly an exciting it's truly exciting to be able to come together today and celebrate. And graduates, parents, and friends, commencement ceremonies are honored and distinguished occasions, as well as a time for big celebration. Please feel free to express your pride and happiness as your candidate receives their degree. Will the department marshals please direct the graduates to the podium? Beginning with the Department of Animal Sciences. Miranda Lee Zuvich, Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Madeline Serwinski with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Jordan Ashley Parker with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Roe Balmer with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Cameron Reese Scharf with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Brianna Emiko Kimura with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Chloe Nicole Willenborg with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Riley Howard with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Madison Olivia Torres with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Bailey Jeanette Burke with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Brogan Nolan Murray with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Kayla Alexis Selk with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Madison Riley Steele with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Emily Campbell with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Rayleigh Gray Grace Mikeska with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and a minor in microbiology. Daniela Salil Carr with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Reagan Rose Blair with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Parker Mar Mary Kieber with a Bachelor of Science in e Equine Science. Lucy Blick Mertens with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Devin Delaney Brown with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business Administration. Jordan Michelle Johnson with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Emma Grace Steinke with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business Administration. Marley Higgins with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Marisol De La Torre De Reza with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business. Marguerite Ann McGill with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business. Jacob Boyes with a Bachelor of Science in e Animal Science. Kylie Griswold with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Savannah Maki Hartung with a Bachelor of Science in e Animal Science. Callie Gray Madison with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Ariana Soleil Baker with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Daniela Alejandra Rodriguez with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Erica Elizabeth Machuca with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Katrina Wallace with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. 
Sierra Cheyenne Stevens with the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Grace Elizabeth Ingley with the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Maria Fernanda de Felipe Ortiz with the Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Next, we have the Department of Agricultural Biology. Yay! Olivia Lograsso with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Biology. Patrick Andrew Murray with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Biology. Our next department is the Department of Soil and Crop Sciences. Laura Catherine Moore with the Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences. Lucas Jeffrey Dale with the Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences. Lauren Mary Hibbard with the Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences, Soil Restoration and Conservation. Next is the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics. <laughs> Devin Christi Christopher Gurke with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Aspen Covey Duck with the Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Madeline Wallace Mason with the Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Alcario Michael Artuso with the Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Jose Alejandro Veleta with the Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Virginia Tong Tuan with the Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Chantel Marie Wolf with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Jacob Paul Addy with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Luke Conley Gansberg with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Luke Farah with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Agricultural Economics. Joseph Andrew Nickel with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Jared William Sinclair with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Kevin Joseph Snyder with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Education. Cody Wayne Compton with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Hayden Price Jones with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Erica Lynn Langbaum with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Nicholas R. Caldwell with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Shannon Elizabeth Byrne with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. Maggie Mae Baldwin with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business. And next is the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. Joseph Daniel Long with the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture. Oh. Efren Garcias Lopez with the Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Controlled Environment Horticulture. <laughs> Hu Lei, Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Controlled Environment Horticulture. 
Jacob T. Knight with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture Floriculture. Brennan Tolari with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture Floriculture. Xavier Balthazar Lucero with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticultural Business Management. Ila M. Jolly with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Controlled Environment and Horticulture. Jason Crimmins with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticultural Business Management. Brianna Nicole Mills with a Bachelor of Science in Horticultural, Horticultural Business Management. Vanessa Alvarado with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticultural Science. And Blake Jacob Sherman with a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Turf Management. Let's show our celebration and enthusiasm for the graduates one more time. At this time, I think it's appropriate to have a student reflection about what this journey has meant and what we can learn from it as we, as we go forward. With that in mind, uh, please join me in welcoming your student commencement speaker, Laura Moore, to the podium. <laughs> Laura's graduating today with a major in soil and crop sciences, and her future plans include staying at CSU to study soil microbiology and pursue a PhD with Dr. Kelly Wrighton. You know, one of the ways that Laura really stood out for us was when we awarded the Shepherdson Student Leadership Award in the College of Agricultural Sciences. That's an award that's for a student that really exemplifies all of those characteristics that we find in leadership and that we want to honor and, and, and provide the opportunity to celebrate. And so in that, we ask if they might be willing to speak with us a little bit, and now's Laura's opportunity. So welcome, Laura. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to welcome all the distinguished guests, professors, administrators, families, friends, and fellow graduates for joining us here tonight. It is a great honor and privilege to give this address for the fall graduating class of 2022, and I'm thrilled to celebrate with you. While graduating from this esteemed university is a phenomenal accomplishment on its own, the graduates here today deserve extra congratulations as each and every one of us persevered through the, the tremendous hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic in order to reach the finish line. Balancing mental health, grades, and academic involvement was no easy feat over these last two years. And graduates, I hope you take great pride in your resiliency and determination as you enter the next chapter of your lives. I understand the purpose of this address is to offer inspiration as we take our next steps into the world. And while I do hope to do that tonight, I believe it's also important to acknowledge some of the realities of life. Most of us in this room today have faced some sort of hardship prior to the pandemic. For those of you who were lucky enough to have it be your first significant life challenge, I hope it will not come as a surprise to learn that it won't be your last. For better or worse, life often feels like one big beautiful mess. As we grow older and see the world through a more realistic and unfiltered lens, it can sometimes feel overwhelming. Many of us grew up with the traditional narrative that we must go to school, get good grades, graduate, get a high paying job, get married, buy a home, have children, retire, and finally, once we are 65, take time to enjoy life. While there's nothing wrong with this trajectory, the reality is that in this modern world, many of us will take a much less linear path to go where we want to go, and most of us will want to go very different places. Graduates, you are in a unique position where you can do whatever you want with your life in whatever order you please. In my opinion, this should be celebrated as we have endless opportunities at our fingertips. I believe it's important to embrace the non-linear path and do our best to wholeheartedly enjoy the entire experience wherever it takes us without judgment. 
I have enthusiastically adopted this sentiment as I'm graduating as an adult learner at 31 years old. As a teenager, I had to overcome great adversity as I faced significant mental health and addiction challenges. The curveball in my ad adolescence caused my life to take an entirely different direction, that through a long and winding journey full of roadblocks, uncertainty, joy, frustration, tears, and laughter has led me to stand before you today. Before returning to school, I spent several years traveling, working on a variety of farms and nonprofit organizations. I became fascinated with how agriculture is practiced throughout various environments and cultures, and these experiences fueled my desire to understand agricultural systems more intensely. But even more specifically, I wanted to explore the relationships between agriculture and the environment to know how changing our approach to agriculture could solve problems globally rather than create them. Therefore, I returned to school to study soil and crop sciences, and I'm exceptionally proud to officially be a CSU alum. I am eternally grateful for my experience here and for the excellent education I have received. But more importantly, I feel immense gratitude for my path as a whole, as my greatest hardships were transformed into lessons I have followed closely. And I hope to share a few of those with you today. The first of which is to make sure you find what gives you purpose. This, joy, this world is too big and full of wonder to be stagnant. Find what brings you joy, fills you with excitement, and makes you eager to start your day. However, I'm sure many here may feel they have already found their purpose, as graduating from the College of Agriculture is, in my completely unbiased opinion, one of the greatest professions we can dedicate our lives to. The world today is facing a changing climate coupled with a growing population. And whether you hope to be a plant geneticist, soil scientist, veterinarian, researcher, horticulturalist, or farmer, I hope you recognize just how honorable of a career path you have chosen. Through these professions, we have the potential to combat these issues by feeding our communities through innovation and sustainability. As we either enter our new careers or continue in academia, despite how fulfilling and wonderful it will be at times, there will be occasions when we question why we are here. There will be many more moments of uncertainty and frustration. However, if you can hold on to your purpose and use it as fuel to motivate you to keep moving forward, you will likely find a great deal of meaning and joy will follow. This leads me to another valuable lesson I've learned, which is to view your hardships as opportunities to mold you into a more resilient and compassionate human. We, while we often have little control over the cards we are dealt, we never lose the power to choose what to focus on. If we can learn to transform our mindset to understand how to process, learn from, and grow through the obstacles we face while also finding gratitude wherever we can, we will grow into people who are adaptable, resilient, and come from a place of compassion over anger and bitterness. I acknowledge this idea is easier said than done and is a skill we must continuously practice and develop throughout our lives, but if you can learn to utilize these ideas now, it is likely you will find yourself facing your obstacles with a newfound sense of confidence and strength. The next is to never lose your sense of curiosity and eagerness to learn. As children, we grew up thinking our parents knew everything, only to realize as teenagers that they were wrong about everything, and then realizing again as adults that maybe they really do know more than, know more than we thought. But the reality is we all know very little in the grand scheme of things, and that is part of what this, makes this world such a beautiful and fascinating place. Even the most knowledgeable experts have more to learn, and when we can acknowledge there's always more to discover, even from the most unexpected sources, that's when we truly grow. The next lesson may be one of the most important ones I have discovered, which is to learn to be comfortable with who you are, exactly as you are. I know that loving yourself can feel daunting and sometimes even impossible, so I implore you to begin by accepting yourself instead. Do not forget to be gentle to yourself as you have enough on your plate as it is, and you don't need to add your own criticism to the pile. Know that you are enough and don't need to be anyone else but yourself and your be anyone else but your most authentic and genuine self. And through this acceptance, make sure you take care of yourself, both emotionally and physically. Eat well, move your body in whatever way feels good, spend time outside and with people who support and encourage you. Everyone in this room has the ability to make a positive impact on their communities and beyond, which means the world needs you. So be kind to yourself, nourish your body, and embrace who you are. But even with all of this being said, the last lesson I would like to share is to not take life too seriously. While I hope everyone here will strive to be the best versions of themselves they can be, I hope you remember to have fun while you're at it. Spend time enjoying your hobbies. Make sure to, ha uh, 
Make sure to, find, to see your friends, find reasons to laugh, and take time off while you're young to explore and enjoy the world. Because while it will sometimes feel, um, because while it sometimes be hard, life can also be so unbelievably beautiful and inspiring. So do what makes you happy, and never forget that it's never too late to change your mind. Do not let your pride get in the way of deciding you want to change something about your life, no matter how old you are or how much work it took to get you there. Making the best decision for you, your purpose, happiness, and well-being will always be worth it. So to wrap up, I would like to offer one more huge congratulations to all the graduates here today. You are strong and capable and can accomplish anything you want to do. Do not be discouraged by the downfalls in life. Instead, use them to your advantage. As you navigate the next chapter of your lives, make sure you find your purpose. Be resilient and compassionate. Take care of yourself, be authentic, and find joy in your life. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Laura, for those inspiring marks, remarks for your fellow students. Good afternoon or early evening, y'all. All right, hold on. If y'all were in my class, you would know that I don't go until I hear it back. So how about good afternoon, y'all? Good afternoon, y'all. There we are. Very good. Y'all are out there. Hey, we are getting close to the end. I am what stands between you all and that anticipation of what's next. So a couple things that we need to get through yet this, this, uh, uh, this afternoon evening. So my name is Matt Camper. I use he, him pronouns, and I am really proud to serve as the Assistant Dean of Teaching Practice and Academic Programs for the College of Agricultural Sciences. As I stand here in front of you, I've been reflecting on the fact that all of you have a different path and future ahead. But whether you stay here in Fort Collins or travel to the far ends of the world, you have one important thing in common with each other and with about a quarter million others that have come before you. You are all now alumni of Colorado State. And there's one more rite of passage that is part of that. So at this time, it's time for you to take those tassels and move them from the right side over to the left. Now, in the realm of what Laura said in not taking yourself too seriously, when I walked out of our beautiful new Nutrient Agricultural Sciences building and caught the wind, my tassel took off and headed out east somewhere and is now somewhere, I believe, nearing Fort Morgan. So I couldn't join you in that, but it is what it is. But with that small act, y'all, you join poets and scientists, teachers and engineers, food producers, care providers, entrepreneurs, and a myriad of others who have walked across this stage. Please always remember that no matter where your personal and professional journey takes you, the College of Agricultural Sciences, your instructors, and the Alumni Association will be here for you every step of the way. Based on personal experience, I promise you that the pride and the excitement and the nervousness you're feeling right now will provide the fuel for the road ahead. But eventually, those feelings will change. They'll deepen. They'll mix with memories, and they'll turn into nostalgia. As that happens, remember that this special place will always be your home. Just like those rows of American elm trees on the oval, you are rooted here at Colorado State University. I'd like to be the first to welcome you to the alumni family, so congratulations on a job well done. Now I know that today is important for all of you sitting down here in these front couple rows, but there's a final group of people we wish to acknowledge. At this time, I would like to ask that all of the family and friends joining us today to please stand if you are able. Folks, this group of graduates worked hard to succeed because you showed them what hard work and success look like. They had motivation because you were always there building them up. They took advantage of new and diverse opportunities because you gave them the confidence to do so. Graduates, these wonderful people standing around you right now helped you with homework, made you food that you liked, or even if you didn't, usually at least made you try it, hugged you into feeling better, inspired you in your own career path and passions, and probably helped you all to be better people. These folks here for you, standing around you today, are, for lack of a better word, awesome. And now, 
through your applause and cheering and whatever devices you have to make loud noises, it's time for you to tell them so. That was just a test to see if anybody snuck in cowbells. Just saying. <laughs> you may all be seated. Thank you so much. As we begin to draw to a close, I want to thank members of the platform party, staff in the college, our Ag Council and Ag Ambassador representatives, and all of the others who helped arrange this commencement. A very special thanks to Kenna Bridges and Bridget Flood for providing sign language interpretation, to Dr. Sean Archibek for reading the names the Colorado State University Wing Walker Honor Guard for presenting the colors, and the Colorado State Brass Quintet and Lucy Logan for leading us in singing. So this is where we're going to have to stand and sit a couple times, just so you know. At this time, I'd like everyone to please rise up and join Lucy Logan and the Colorado State Brass Quintet in singing the Colorado State alma mater. The world will be displayed on the screens here, so you don't have to worry about having them memorized. Thank you, Lucy. You may all be seated. Graduates, you have been a part of a special event. It's your university graduation, an event you will always remember. We are proud to have played a part in your lives, but, most, but we're most excited about what you will do and who you'll become in the future. In just a few moments, you will rise and leave this venue as alumni of Colorado State University and of the College of Agricultural Sciences. We humbly ask you that as you take those first steps towards whatever lies ahead, that you reflect on and hold, and hold tightly to the principles of community that are the core of this great university. I ask that the audience please remain seated while the platform group, faculty, and graduates retire from the Grand Ballroom. Thank you for being with us, and in the same manner as I have concluded every class that I've taught here at CSU, I ask that you all be safe, that you take care of one another, now go be Rams. <laughs>